Well, we'll go ahead and get rolling. So I had the intention this morning was we've got a lot of new folks. Darlene's a perfect example. Um, Nicole, you you may or may not need this. I don't know <laughs> because we're going to review the, our, our Century 21 leads program, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. Um, but it was kind of a, a, a need that I saw happening because we've got a whole bunch of new people and I'm explaining the leads program to a whole bunch of new people. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to do it this morning. Just had hoped that we'd get more of those people on this on this call. That's OK. It'll get recorded. We'll have this on record and, and then people can refer to it when they need to. Sound like a good plan? Okay, so um, a couple of things that I need to make a note of um, going into this is if you currently are using um, any of our legacy systems before Moxie, i.e. Zap, Business Builder, or Toolkit CMA, those three systems are um, have a shelf life that's about to expire at the end of this month. So if you are still using them in any way, shape, or form, it would be a good idea to pull your stuff off of them, i.e. your contacts, your downloads. Um, if you have your host, your website hosted on one of the old webacy, we, legacy sites like Zap or MyC21 sites, we need to work on getting you up to date on your Moxie website, which will be replacing all of those three systems. So if that is a need, you need to do it with a sense of urgency because it's about to go away on December 31st. Um, it goes from read only to no longer accessible. Okay, so hopefully that does not apply to you. If it does, you need to book some time with me and we'll see what you've still got out there and then we'll, um, we'll make sure that your uh, new systems are turned on. Sound like a good plan? Okay, I am going to launch into, as soon as I can figure out which screen I'm gonna do it on, and we're gonna talk about the, re the, the leads program and review it as if nobody knows anything about it because we're gonna do it for our brand new folks. Okay, everybody looking at the Century 21 Connect Lead Generation Program. Thank you. Okay, so why? Do we provide leads to our agents? So this is the things, this is what we're gonna talk about um, in our uh, review today. Four main points, why do we do it? Why do we provide leads? What is the cost to receive any of these company provided leads is the question number two that everybody asks. And the third is how do I become eligible to receive those leads? And then the last thing is what do I do when I receive a lead? All right, um, so let's, tackle each one of these one at a time. So why does Century 21 provide um, realty or why do our, our, our brokerage, not Century 21, but C21 Connect, why do we supply our agents with leads? Well, helps them to get from the life that they have to the life that they want. Gee, you've heard that before, haven't you? Hopefully. Um, we're trying to meet the need. Uh, and right along with, and what else can we do? That's our our theme and our mantra. Um, but I will say, I think that the most, the, the the probably the biggest reason why we provide leads is to try to bridge the gap as a new to Century 21 agent comes on board and they're transitioning maybe from another brokerage or for an, from another vocation. And that is, um, biting the bullet and going 100% into real estate with no safety valve or no safety net whatsoever can be a little intimidating. So that's why we provide that um, that gap to bridge the, the the from the career that you had to the one that you're look, working towards. All right, we want you to take leads because it provides valuable experience and exposure. Um, and it's going to get you out of your comfort zone. It's going to get you into a position where you're uncomfortable having conversations because when you have uncomfortable conversations, you get better at them. And when you get better at them, you're more comfortable having more. So it is a, a catch 22 that ends up uh, paying dividends in the, in the end for you. All right. And so the leads that we provide uh, to our agents are not intended to be your entire business model for a long-term vertical in your business. They are intended to be a stopgap solution, intended to be a temporary bridge, not a permanent way of doing business, okay? The idea is we're gonna help you with some leads 
as we are helping you to develop your other verticals and your other business models that are going to feed into your into your business. All right. And lastly, we want to hone your skill sets in, in co overcoming those objections. You're going to get them all the time when you're taking leads. Am I right about this, Nicole? <laughs> all right. So the next question is, what does it cost to receive any company provided leads? So this may come to a shock to some of you that may have come in coming from other places, but we do not charge you anything additional. We do not change your split based off of anything. All you have to do is ask and you will receive leads. And all you have to do is um, be a good steward of the, those leads and you will get more. So there is no charge. Um, you just simply close them and it's simply your split at the end, whatever is in your independent contractor agreement. It really is that simple, y'all. All right, next, how do I become eligible to receive those leads? So there are a few prerequisites, things that we ask of you in order to at least get you started. So the first are some IT requirements. You have must have your C21 Connect email set up and your Supra set up on your phone. So in other words, um, if you are taking leads, you need to be able to um, receive those leads, which is primarily done through, through email. So if your email is not set up, you can't really do it. And secondly, if you are taking leads, more than likely you're going to need to show that property. So therefore it becomes a prerequisite that you have your super so that you can potentially end up opening a door for somebody. All right. So those are the IT requirements beforehand. From a, from a practical standpoint, additional requirements is we want you to be a frequent presence here in the office. If you very rarely darken the door, um, you're not gonna be um, top of mind in terms of lead distribution. So you may not get as many as you might otherwise. All right, we want you to be engaged in your business. To be taking leads means that you are, you are actively working with clients, so that you are plugged in, and that you have the ability to respond to them quickly. All right. We also um, ask that in order for you to be better equipped to handle the calls that inevitably are going to result from this is that you attend Mike's 9 a.m. practice session um, that we provide here in the Learning Center. This is where you're going to learn how to speak effectively to the lead, what to say, how to say, um, what scripts to use, how to overcome their objections, and more importantly, all of the subtle cultural aspects of uh, of uh, overcoming those objections and uh, espousing your value to somebody. We ask that you be organized, that you be responsive, but most importantly, I wanna introduce the concept of stewardship is when you're given a lead, it is a gift. It is, um, it is something that you might otherwise never have. And in order to get more of them, you wanna be a good steward of what you have received. Um, so we want you to then um, uh, record your results. And, um, and do the activities that you were, were asked to do from the beginning, which is to be a good steward of the lead, to contact them, to be a bird dog, okay? So the next question is, how do I get that initial eligibility to receive those leads? When you have met the prerequisites that we talked about on, this, on the previous slide, you can register your request to receive leads directly with Mike by simply emailing him a copy of that empty lead follow-up report. So many of you have noticed on Friday afternoon, you'll get that personal email from the help desk saying, here's the lead report. Make sure you update it and send it to Mike by five o'clock. Um, you may have also seen that in your um, in workplace. And that is the reminder for weekly eligibility and for anybody that is first starting off on this, um, you can simply send Mike a, an empty copy of that report um, and say, I'm, Mike, I'm currently not receiving reports, but would like to receive additional. And that is the trigger, okay? And when you do so, Mike will most likely throw you a, uh, a bone, a lead or two here and there to see how you're, how you're handling it. And then ongoing weekly, you're going to provide the feedback on the actions taken and the results. And I'm going to show you some examples of how to do that on the lead report here in just a second. Any questions so far? Got it. 
Some of you are old hands at this, some of you are brand new, so I, uh, I fully expect there to be some questions. So when you get an email, it looks, it's likely to look something very similar to this. Okay, so the lead came in, um, uh, ignore some of the personal information on there, but you can now see this is how the information comes to you. Usually there's some inform additional information about the property itself. It kind of depends on which the source is coming from, but you might have some additional information, but more than likely you're gonna have a phone number and an email and your goal is speed to lead. So we're gonna talk about that process next. So what actions do I take? When uh, I get a lead is the buzzword speed to lead. Um, Statistics have shown over and over and over again, the quicker you respond to a lead, the more um, the least, least amount of time that goes by from the time that they submit that inquiry to the time that you call them, the more likely it is you're gonna get a better result and a good response from them. So please, the key is speed to lead when you get a lead, call almost immediately. Okay, as quickly as you can, I think the, the, the guideline is two hours. If it's gonna be more than that, don't accept the lead, okay? So when you get that lead, you first are going to acknowledge acceptance of it and just simply say, accept uh, email. Typically you wanna do that within two hours. Um, if you're not able to do that, please say uh, decline and it'll go on to somebody else, all right? And then you are going to reach out to the lead and the script for that is going to be something along the lines of this. Good afternoon, this is Joe Schmuckatelli with Century 21. I received a notification that you were browsing homes on our website and I want to reach out and see if you saw anything that captured your interest. And then we go on through the question process and the, uh, the buyer process from there. Any questions on that? All right, and then if you are successful in reaching that, your goal at this, um, at this juncture is to try to get in front of them. Um, we all know that when you, when you meet somebody in person, they become more real. Um, they become, um, um, you immediately give more credibility to somebody when you see their face instead of just a voice on the other end of the phone. Um, ideally, your professionalism and your best value proposition to you be able to articulate to your customer is gonna come from an in-person meeting. So the goal of that, uh, that call is to ultimately get in front of them. Schedule the showing, schedule a buyer's appointment, whatever you have to do to get in front of them, that's where you wanna go, okay? Your goal is to ask probing questions. What is the lead looking for? Um, Remember the the ten step buyer question buyer process for um, for Ninja is primarily about asking questions. All right, one of the things you might want to ask them if they're already working with a realtor, if they are, um, and there's some some great creative ways to ask that question. I don't know if anybody's figured this out, um, but one of the best ways is not are you working with a realtor? Hey, is there another real estate agent that is sending you properties that uh, that you're reviewing online? It's so another way to ask that question without asking that question. All right. You want to focus on the criteria of the home that the lead is, is looking for. Um, you want to, as part of your value proposition, you want to offer search, uh, offer to search for homes for the lead based on their above criteria. And, and you have some resources and assets that, that they don't have that can differentiate you from, uh, from the rest. And that is through MLS, through Real Scout, through um, offline properties coming soon. You can you can espouse your value in a number of different ways to that client. All right. Um, and most importantly, find a way to differentiate yourself via your value proposition when you're working with that uh, with them as their agent. Okay. Um, and then you can also use your position with uh, and your knowledge of the industry to provide them some additional resources, such as mortgage lenders, contractors, vendors, painters, 
whatever they may happen to need at that particular juncture. These are all ways to increase your value proposition to that client. All right. So then you have made your calls. What is kind of the after action stuff that you need to do? Well, you need to enter the leads contact information into your CRM and in theory into your phone. Um, if you get your Moxie set up correctly, that will happen very quickly and easily on both. All right, send the lead, um, set up the lead uh, on an appropriate stay in touch type campaign with either market updates or um, or your weekly embedded video messages from you, um, your uh, search criteria, your real scout search, whatever you happen to be doing um, is the next item on there. And then you wanna record your efforts on the lead follow-up report that I'm about to show you. Any questions on these? Maybe this might be a person that you want to um, send your one of your handwritten notes to also after you've put them in your CRM. Okay, if we're talking about ninja concepts, we can keep those rolling into here. All right. Um, if the lead is unreasonable or unresponsive, then your job is to be the bird dog. Okay. Um, alternate your communication methods at this point. It's always a good idea. Don't just try to reach them all by phone. Try one phone, then the next via text, and the next time via email, and then the text, and then the next time via handwritten note, and then alternate. Reach out in different ways because you cannot always reach everybody via the same contact method. Everybody has a different way of that they like to be reached, and sometimes you've got to re meet them where their need is. Okay. And then consider enter, entering that lead into your set, CRM and set them up on a regular campaign that they're getting. Okay. And then, of course, record your leads, uh, your results on the lead follow up report, which looks like this. And it is very, very simple, y'all. It really is not that concept, uh, big of a concept. You put the prospect's name, the date they were assigned, the date you contacted them, and the current status and any, any notes. Um, the best way I've seen this filled out is just chronologically, oops, is, is here you can do multiple lines under the notes and just say, uh, you know, today on 12-5, I called them, 12-6, I emailed them, 12-7, I texted them, whatever the case may be. Keep going. Any questions on that? All right. Once you have done all of this and you record your efforts and your results in the follow-up report, then every week, I suggest you set yourself a, a, a reminder or even block your time on Friday afternoon between one and two so that that is the time where you um, where you tie up the loose ends and complete your follow-up report and email that to Mike and a copy to me or to your coach, whoever that happens to be. Okay. The goal is not to have it in by 5 a.m. This is key. Only agents that turn in their lead follow-up report on Friday will remain eligibility for the following week. All right. If you do not, then two things, if you're not able to get it by five o'clock on Friday, then, then one of two things is, is going to be assumed. Either it's assumed that you're either too busy to accept additional leads. In other words, you've got all that you can handle, or frankly, you're either that or you're, you're too disorganized or, or um, unable to handle the administrative burden of keeping in touch with it, in which case you shouldn't be taking additional leads anyway. You should use that time to get caught up, okay? Might be harsh, but it is about the only way we have to, to differentiate uh, those that are, are uh, actively working leads and those that are not. All right. If you lose lead eligibility, that's okay. No big deal. Just hop back on the bandwagon the following week by sending your lead report in on time and you will be good to go. No harm, no foul, no questions asked. Just get back on the, on the bandwagon. All right, and then um, monitor your schedule and eligibility for lead acceptance closely. If you're gonna be unavailable, if you're gonna be out of town, if you're not gonna be able to accept a lead, then you need to let us know. 
Um, and you can remove yourself temporarily from lead eligibility for a weekend, for a week. If you're going to be on vacation, we got holidays coming up, something to think about during that time frame. And then by all means, we got to celebrate the wins when we get one. So if anybody's doing good, we want to hear about it. Any last minute questions for me? What y'all got? Anything? Curtis, was anything new here? Did, was this new to you? Uh, actually, it was. Thank you. I needed okay. that. Good. I'm glad. Hopefully, there's a whole bunch more that are going to watch this on video here shortly. Um, and uh, then you'll be better prepared for it. All right. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Have a great day. If you got any questions, give me a holler.